Do you want your voice to be heard? Introducing YouGov, the global leader in public opinion and data. With YouGov, you can fill out surveys and polls and share your opinion on a wide range of topics, including politics, current events, entertainment, all that dog. All that dog. If you need a side hustle or something, YouGov is probably for you. Completed surveys earns you points that you can spend on a bunch of bunch of different rewards. You can definitely come up off these surveys. It's super easy and your feedback helps shape the world around you. Don't just be a bystander. YouGov surveys provide valuable insights to businesses, governments, and organizations, helping them make informed decisions that truly reflect public opinion. The YouGov app is super easy to use. You can hop on at any time and participate in surveys directly from your smartphone or computer. Whenever I'm downloading a game or movie or something and it's taking forever, I'll just hop on YouGov and stack my points. It's definitely more lucrative than the scrolling Instagram or booty pages or whatever I be doing. So join me and the millions of others who are making a difference, participating in surveys that matter. Hit that link in the description right now. It's free, it's easy to use, easy to earn yourself some extra cash. Shout out to you, Gov. Appreciate y'all for sponsoring the video. Now let's finish the video. It starts off with like four minutes of Nick Cannon rapping. No, that's not a joke. Nick Cannon is rapping. Jesus Christ, who starts their movie off like that? That's not a good sign, bro. Trying to get my head straight. It's the city of Chirac. Get your bed, mate. My city, yeah. Forties get clapped. The story of fact. Niggas can't shoot, so babies get whacked. They die every day in my city, yeah. Trash. Trash. So babies get whacked? Nobody says getting whacked, bro. What are you, Joe Pesci? After that awful, awful intro, we get into some hood movie narration by the legendary Samuel L. Jackson. He and all the Spike Lee joints. It's a Spike Lee joint, unfortunately. The character's name is Dolomedes, and he got magical time stopping powers or something. He like the narrator. This nigga dressed like a hot dog bun. Shine back, shine back. The Greek Aristophanes penned a play satirizing his day. And in the style of his time, Stophanes made that shit rhyme. Yeah, so apparently the whole movie rhymes. They rhyming all the dialogue, except sometimes they don't randomly. He gotta be trolling, 100%. What the fuck is wrong with you, bro? We get another terrible Nick Cannon song. Are you serious? All right, Spike Lee. You picked the worst rapper you could think of and had him do multiple songs before the movie started. You trolling, bro. I see what you're doing. The movie is actually an adaptation of an ancient Greek play called Alyssa Strata. I ain't never seen this shit before. I'm guessing it rhymes. Even still though, this is not a good idea. I feel like you should have made this a fictional city or something. I don't like this. So we in the club and everybody's turning up to Nick Cannon's music for some reason. Doing this goofy ass, old lady ass dance. That's what I'm saying, bro. Why don't you just leave it alone? You don't even know what you're talking about. This is not an accurate young people dance. We get a little backstory on these two rival gang members. They don't like each other or something. This nigga named Long D, what the fuck? Look at these fake ass text messages. Why is the first letter in every word capitalized? It's not an accurate young people conversation. Yo life, kilt? Oh my God, bro. Yo life with a Y is kilt. Nobody says that. Where are you getting all this from? That's how racist people talk when they try to make fun of us. Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe this how Chicago niggas really are. He might've done his research. It don't seem like it. It seems like he just liked the name Chirac and ran with it, but maybe he researched a lot. I didn't. So Nick Cannon plays this character, Long D, AKA Demetrius, AKA Chirac. Hold up. They call him Chirac. Oh. His girlfriend's name is Alyssa Strada. She played by Tiana Paris, fine ass. That's the actress's name. 
She fat as shit in every movie. Holla, holla, holla. Holla at you, holla, holla at you, holla at you, holla at you. Buchanan and his girl make it back home safely after the club incident. They start rhyming at each other, and then we get some sex scene. Everybody loves those, right? Spartans ain't never lacking. We attacking in this bitch. I swear to God, I empty out a whole extendo clip. Great dinky all up in that butt. Come on, girl, let's bust this nut. Nothing but the beat of the head, boy, bumping when my third leg go thump. Beat out my ass. After that awkward ass encounter, some of the rival gang members come through and set Lysistrata's house on fire. Sad house fire. The rival gang leader is played by Wesley Snipes, old ass. He's way too old to be doing street shit at this level, right? His gang is called the Trojans and Nick Cannons is the Spartans. Oh god, come on now, bro. That's like little league teams. No gang is calling themselves the Trojans. Lissa Strada and Nick Cannon make it out of the fire in time. They survived another night in Chirac. Then some R. Kelly music starts playing. That's unfortunate. He is from Chicago, though. Somewhere up, in the world, Morning, there is Tootie. violence. Hey, hey. Brother against brother. Cold girls against their will. Chain them up in my basement. Four, five, six, fifty. Chain them up in my basement. This shit definitely feels like a high budget trapped in the closet, right? The rhyming, the R. Kelly, all that. That's hilarious. This nigga accidentally remade Trapped in the Closet. Oh my God, a the next day, everybody's gathered all around a crime scene. There was another shootout between the Spartans and the Trojans, and little babies got whacked. It's actually a really sad scene. Babies get whacked. My baby. That's my baby. Ain't nobody out here see nothing. And I can't even get to my own child. You don't even deserve to look at my child body laying right there on this ground. None of you. Not you too, Jennifer Hudson. There's so many all-stars in this weak-ass, dumb-ass movie. She all-star. I don't fault any of the actors for doing this, by the way. It probably all sounded good on paper. It's got a legendary black director behind it. I get it. I get the appeal. Jennifer Hudson in particular still delivers some strong moments in here. She a good actress. If you can scream and cry real loud, you're a good actor to me. Whatever. I don't know. Lissa Strada gets some of the women from the neighborhood together and they start planning a sex strike to help stop the violence. They give us some more of this stiff ass fake young people dialogue. Who's tripped this be? Indigo. Indigo? Isn't that Cyclops' main squeeze? Yeah, yeah, I could dig it, Sister Ash, but make sure they don't bust no cats. What y'all tie strikes, what? Man, what y'all want? Hey, man, chill with that shrivel pole. I'll whoop your butt, y'all. After a bit of arguing, the women decide to squash their personal beefs, and the strike is officially underway. I will deny all rights of access or entrance. Nappy pouch? Ew, I don't even want any of that. Don't call it that. Dolomiti's stupid ass shows up again and he basically sums up the whole movie for us. This must be some bullshit. Ain't no fucking way. Lissa Strada then tells Nick Cannon that he's way too gangster. Okay. Bang, bang, a skid, skid, nigga. She says he's not getting no more nappy pouch until he changes his gangster, gangster ways. Lame as hell playing games for real with this whack ass panty stripe. And that's that shit we don't like. All you care about is this tired gangster game. Well, it's lame. All up in that butt. The men go to the strip club now to find some nappy pouch. Ill, bro. I'm gonna stop saying that now. I apologize. I can't say the P word though. YouTube don't like that. I'll find something else. Anyway, they in the strip club and it's empty and there's no bitches. All the strippers quit their jobs because of the new panty strike. Yeah, okay, that's not happening. That's the most unrealistic part of the movie. It's rough out here. It's Saturday night. We getting tight? Not tonight. It's the same all over town. Clubs is closing down. What the fuck is this stuff? We got some more black all-stars that got tricked into being in this. Dave Chappelle, he all-star. Wesley Snipes, he all-star. Jay Washington, that's my homeboy. So he all-star because of that. Shid guy, 
This guy right here from the memes, he was in The Wire. Nah, you're not an all-star, bro. You ruined the whole meme just now. I got 30 girls stripping for me. Another five on loan. Not one of them is answering their goddamn phone. These hoes have literally shut down the penis power grid. So my question to y'all is what you motherfuckers done did? Bro, how did you even rope Dave Chappelle into doing this? Apparently, this was the first movie he's done since Undercover Brother, like 20 years ago. This is the one he chose? I mean, it's only a cameo, but still, I don't get it. They at the little girl's funeral now. John Cusack is the preacher, and he's doing a really unconvincing black scent the whole time. Why? I don't know. Artistics or something. It's an artistically movie. <laughs> Politicians are in the pocket of the National Rifle Association. Mass incarceration is the new Jim Crow. With popping pills and popping bottles, more concerned with what's on YouTube. Nothing. There's something kind of tasteless about this scene. I don't know, an over-stylized little girl funeral scene? I don't like that. I can't explain why, really. I don't like any of this, in case you didn't realize it. I'm not having a great time right now. Like, I agree with the sentiment, but none of the characters are saying anything new. It's all just a bunch of ham-fisted, preachy dialogue. Then they throw some shitty joke scene in right after. That's the whole movie. You got the lane, and you blow too much, man. Right, just, we, gotta, we, gotta, we gotta wake up, man. That Charleston massacre? Murdered at a prayer meeting. Hate crime. Assassination. Domestic terrorists. So they riding past some military school or armory or something, and I guess this chick knows the general there. They go inside and seduce him or something and take over their base. Yeah, that's not realistic, bro. You're taking all these real world problems and solving them with these cartoon ass solutions. I don't like that. Just get all the strippers in the city to quit and take over the military. That's all we got to do, black people. Wake up. General King Kong, my bestie Rashida, she served under you. Oh. 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 I'm always prepared. Look, you suck it now. Oh, you like that? Yeah, that's yeah. so sweet. Oh. It's sweet as come on. Meanwhile, news of the strike starts to get media attention. We get some more rhyming from Angela Bassett and these old ass ladies. Miss Helen, as an attorney, I know the trip. I convict our youngsters to this new slave ship. I will not violate the oath. Now, sisters, come on, this isn't a joke. Then some random hoteps we never seen before chime in. They trying so hard to be funny. This is the most painful movie experience I've ever had in my life. I'm not gonna lie, bro. I thought about rage quitting the whole video multiple times. I don't want to experience this anymore. Ain't this a blip? Silly rabbits on a stone cold trip. What you got to say, Oedipus? Well, I asked my mommy last night and she said the women are right. Gentlemen, I am proud to say that I was breastfed till I was 12 years old. Oh. So the hoteps and the old ladies are turning on each other now because of the strike. No peace, no Lissa Strada is still inside the military shit, training her army. Meanwhile, the mayor of Chirac is in his office freaking out. Apparently all the female employees quit to support the strike. Why the hell they quit their jobs? I thought the strike was about not giving up no booty. I see why the strippers quit. Why would these regular ass city hall employees quit? She's getting the other secretaries to walk off the job. I could lose the female vote over this stupid joke. Operation Hot and Bother. Those Cronin brothers will make those mommies wet and make them on a jet. The girls go viral, of course. Of course they do. All the young kids go viral these days. NFTs, it's a young people movie. Wake up young people. So anyway, after some more quote unquote humor, we abruptly go back to the social commentary. Then it's back to the humor. I'm getting fucking whiplash over here, bro. Trayvon Martin, Rakia Boyd and Freddie Gray. Black lives matter every day. Dude, you think Sister Sandra Bland hung herself? 
booty, 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 booty. My God, he's got booty on the brain. Sir! You know, Spike Lee is one of the most acclaimed black filmmakers of all time. But this script feels like it was written by some nigga in community college. Again, I agree with the messages. I love Spike Lee, but this approach is terrible. Hello, my fellow kids ass movie. What is this? Domestic terrorism. Maybe I'm just too dumb. Maybe it's just a smart people movie. That's probably it, right? That's always it. Anyway, we go back to Nick Cannon now. He found another girl and he clearly don't care about they stupid ass strike. Yeah, there's no stopping Nick Cannon. We already knew that. Fuck off. Have to? Again, that's not a thing, bro. People don't text like that. Stop trying to emulate young people. Have to? You don't even save any characters or time typing like that. Why'd you just have a young person help you write this or something? Especially since you're not from Chicago. You're not from this generation even. You sat down and wrote this shit with who? Kevin Wilmot? Some random hotep from Kansas? Like what? Who is this? Anyway, the girls are still locked away with their chastity belt song. They start singing some 70s R&B directly at the camera. Spike Lee joints. What do you expect? No Spike Lee-isms? It's all a part of the government's plan, though, to get the women out. They're blasting some romantic music from 50 years ago. Supposed to make the girls super horny or something. Sure, whatever, bro. That works, right? I don't know how to make girls horny, I'm really asking. We get some more silly boomer ass jokes, followed by some clunky social commentary. You know the vibes by now. Hey, I need some motherfucking Those bullets sever my spine, tore my behind. Now am I able to walk? Lost a kidney, a spleen, most of my digestive tract. One goddamn bullet, dog. That's keeping it 100 fat. The strike has been going on for three months and all the gang members are suffering. They about to give up their gang member ways now. All for that sweet nappy pouch. I'm sorry. Nigga, I know there's hella gang members that don't be getting no pity. I don't think this plan is enough. I also don't think enough women would agree to this, but I'm tired of complaining at this point. Hey, my homie Jay Washington finally gets some lines at the end of the movie. Cyclops, you my man 50 grand, long and strong. But I'm telling you, they ain't wrong. These niggas is shaking like having a seizure in a dice game. Have you ain't finna listen to me, bro. You, you might wanna listen to your woman Indigo. I'm gonna skip to the end now. I'm really tired of doing this. So the mayor of Chirac is fed up with all the protesting and his wife even joined in the strike. The president of the United States of America called me a motherfucking sorry ass punk ass bitch. I can't have my wife's pretty bottom. From your tush I'll find meaning and you'll be squealing like you were in that movie Deliverance. Yeah! The government gets Nick Cannon to talk to the women and stop all the violence in Chicago. This is right after this weird ass hallucination Nick Cannon has for no reason. Artistics, it's artistics, bro. God, you're so dumb, you don't even get it. Domestic terrorists. Nick Cannon's solution to stop the strike is a sex match, a sex showdown. I'm not gonna shoot you. Not a death match, it's a sex match. First one to surrender, lose. They have their showdown live on TV. The government set up a bed and everything for them. Everybody in Chirac is watching the sex showdown live. Of course, you know, the sex showdown on TV right after Hell's Kitchen. Like, what are you talking about? What is your message? Stop violence? No, I'm never gonna stop now. You make me watch this shit, I'm gonna actively be a more violent person from now on, thanks to this movie. I'm gonna attack the next person I see. I don't give a fuck. So in the showdown, whoever gives in first loses. That doesn't matter though, because Wesley Snipes and the Trojans appear out of nowhere and interrupt everything. How they got past the whole entire military outside, I'm not sure. That's my man! We cashing in our chips. We done with all of this dumb shit. 
All the Trojans throw down their guns, and now the violence in Chicago is officially over. Nick Cannon decides to give up Trojans forever. It's a happy ending. Tiana Paris is so good, she ended all the gang warfare in Chicago. I actually do believe that. They all have a final celebration now that we have peace, and we finally find out who whacked Jennifer Hudson's baby. Babies get whacked! Every person in the hoods of America is guaranteed a job, and I don't mean no minimum wage, neither. I got something you want to say. I killed your baby daddy. Oh. This must be some bullshit. Ain't no fucking way. Time for you to do the same. Take the blame. Finally, I'm breathing. So bring the truth. Bring the truth. Bring the truth, brother, breathe. Dolomedes gives us one final monologue, insisting that the movie taught us something and we should be grateful and remember the lesson. I pray to God this nigga's trolling. What the hell was this? This head ass movie. I can't believe what I just witnessed. So remember, Queen Prophet Lysistrata, and the lessons that she taught you. Wake up! I'm at a loss for words. I'm sure Spike Lee's heart was in the right place. He definitely wants to see black people winning. He's definitely given us some amazing art throughout his career. But this movie is so out of touch. Like, it feels like something a white person would make low-key. I'm not even joking. The comedy was unbearable. Worst part is, he treats all these basic-ass messages like they some mic drop, truth bomb type of moments. You're not saying anything new. You're not offering any real solutions. You're not even accurately portraying the city you set the movie in. If you weren't gonna do an accurate depiction of Chicago, you should have left it alone. I appreciate the ambition, I guess. This shit is bizarre though. Some genres just don't work well together. Ancient Greek shit and a hood movie don't really mix, I don't think. Like I said, this felt like a community college stage play. The rhyming was a horrible idea. This shit got an 82% oh critic score. These lying ass, white guilt ass critics, let's just say it contains some of Spike Lee's smartest, sharpest, and all around entertaining late period work. Okay, bro. At the end of the day though, Spike Lee is still an all-star. I'm still a huge fan of his work, but maybe less so now. The movie is that bad. Uh, fun facts, they originally wanted Kanye West to play the main character, Long D, but he dropped out due to scheduling conflicts I mean, it couldn't have been any worse, honestly. It don't matter who's in it. Also, John Cusack's character is based on a real preacher in Chicago. He really talks like that, apparently. I'm assuming his black scent is a little better. John Cusack was barely trying. Come on, bro. That's it for the video. We made it to the end. Make sure y'all leave a like and subscribe. One like subscribe equal one nappy pouch. Nappy pouches up for Prim's Hood Cinema. Big shout out to the Patreon homies. I'm trying to get back into the live streams and everything soon. In the meantime, I got some more reviews coming for you. Make sure you got notifications on. I'm out of here now though. I love you, no pause. All right, what? This gold turtle. <laughs>